the materials are Creative Commons licensed, and they're free to use, free to modify. You can sell them if you want to. I don't know why people would buy them, but go ahead and try. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I'm really hoping that it becomes as common and pervasive as a sexual harassment prevention training. So yeah, the, the goal of the Ally Skills Workshop is to teach you simple, everyday ways as a man uh, that you can act in your workplace or your community, online or in person, uh, and support women. So I recommend you check it out. Oh, one more thing. Uh, this, this year's workshop is supported by an, uh, a $100,000 donation from an anonymous Linux kernel developer. So I'll be teaching one more uh, at LinuxCon in Dublin in two days. Ah. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much to that anonymous Linux kernel developer. I, I understand that yesterday's workshop was the last one to be under the umbrella of the ADA initiative funding in the United States, and the next one would be in Dev on next week. And I, I, I just wanted to, to thank you for, for sharing that incredible opportunity with us. Now, this is the penultimate question that I have prepared for Valerie. The ADA initiative is shutting down, goodness, in a couple weeks now? Now, what led you uh, to make this decision in? What, what are you doing uh, other than um, uh, putting out there with the uh, good license for the, uh, the Allies workshop for the other great works that ADA initiative has produced? Oh. Um, yeah, so the short version is if you're ever trying to run a small nonprofit, uh, it's really hard. <laughs> uh, and I, I basically got exhausted and was ready to do something else. Uh, and it just turned out to be really hard to hire someone who had the specific mix of skills that was needed to grow the ADA initiative to the next level. Uh, but the nice thing is that we were already open sourcing most of our work because we're an open source organization. Uh, so things like the conference anti-harassment policy, we're already fully, other people are creating things on GitHub and making merging pull requests. and. Uh, someone else is maintaining the wiki page that lists the thousands of conferences using it. Um, so that was really great. Uh, so we, we took all of our planning documents for the for Ada Camp and we open sourced those as well. So including these really detailed timelines about when you need to be talking to the child care people in order to get the child care done. And advice for talking to the caterers, wow, it's really hard <laughs> to get good vegan food that has actual calories in it. You're like, that's a 200 calorie lunch. Nobody's happy with that. <laughs> Yeah, what if we added more iceberg lifts? No! Uh, so I recommend you take a look at that. Um, we also did something called the Imposter Syndrome Workshop, which teaches uh, women how to overcome imposter syndrome, which is really rampant in open source software. Uh, and then uh, we trained all, all the people to teach the Ally Skills Workshop. Uh, I'm personally taking a nice long two month vacation, the longest vacation I've ever taken in my adult life. And uh, <laughs> I will actually be teaching the Ally Skills Workshop again um, at conferences and at uh, uh, companies and things like that, starting in January. Well, excellent, excellent. I'm very glad to hear. Now, the, this is the final question, so if you have uh, a question in mind, please uh, pass it to one of our volunteers and we can see what we can do. This is the final question, so I'd better make it good. <laughs> so, how can the people in this room make uh, the Linux community more welcoming to women, underrepresented groups, everyone. So I'm going to ask you to do something that seems both trivial um, but also very hard. So let me do a little explanation, and then I'll ask I'll ask you to do something specific. So, um, so I feel that the primary source of the problems in Linux is this attitude that being a jerk is awesome and cool, right? Uh, so as a counterexample to show you that you can write good software and have a thriving community without that, uh, I'm going to point you at the Python community. Um, Guido Van Rossum is a super nice guy. Uh, he's done amazing development work. Uh, he's also, he also wears a feminist t-shirt to most of his keynotes. Uh, and he once gave a keynote and only answered questions from women because he noticed that men were asking most of the questions. Uh, so as a result, Python, the Python conference, PyCon, went from 1% uh, women speakers in uh, 2011, I believe. It was remarkably recent. 
uh, to today, they now have 30% uh, women attendees and 50% women speakers, right? They've completely changed the makeup of their community, and a lot of it has to do with the leadership of Vito Van Rossum. Uh, so there's this myth that um, being a jerk makes better so software. So I really want to address that right away. If you're like, well, I thought she's so terrible, but Linux is amazing, even though it trashes my files whenever I crash. <laughs> you know. Uh, um, so re very recently, May 2015, there's this paper that came out studying open source projects using the Agile methodology, um, just because they had an easier time of tracking uh, what happened. Uh, this is the, what the paper found, and this is a quote. I'm just going to read it. The more polite developers were, the less time it took to fix an issue. And in the majority of the analyzed cases, the more developers wanted to be part of a project, the more they were willing to continue working on the project over time. So being nice to each other in your development community makes better software faster and, and makes you happy, uh, which is really important. So I want to compare this to Linux and our idol in Linux, who is Linus Torvalds. Um, we like to applaud him when he flips people off on stage. Uh, we like to retweet his jokes uh, when he, he jokingly says that he's just coasting off everyone else's work. Secret, it's not a joke, he is, right? Uh, and when he flames someone on a mailing list, we just get out our popcorn and we send it to each other or we write on you know, funny comments on Linux Weekly News. Uh, so here's the part where I'm gonna ask you to do something hard. I'm gonna ask you, that whenever somebody is a jerk in Linux, instead of laughing and pointing and joining in the fun, to say, I don't think that's so great. Um, to, to reply and say, if someone's talking about an IRC channel, actually, I think that's really mean and that's against the kind of attitude I want to have here. Uh, if someone's wearing a shirt that makes fun of users, uh, I want you to say something to them. Like, hey, you know, that shirt kind of makes me feel uncomfortable. We all started out at users and there's plenty of users here seeing your shirt, right? Um, and then I think that's what it takes. That's the only way that our culture is going to change and the only way that we're going to recruit new people, the people like I was with my alpha at New Mexico Tech, and uh, keep them. So yeah, uh, thank you so much. And that, and that was so awesome. So now we begin the audience questions. Are there major computer conferences without a harassment policy now? To avoid, not to search out. <laughs> there, there's more to this. Are there computer related speakers who like John Scalzi? John Scalzi refuse to speak at conferences without such a policy? Great question. Uh, so, to my knowledge, the only uh, major computer conferences left without anti-harassment policies are uh, the DEF CON um, uh, conference, the hacking conference in Las Vegas, the big one. Uh, they, I think they have like a very mild one that is actually useless. Uh, and things like CES, <laughs> Consumer Electronics, um, other than that, I mean, definitely in the area of open source software, everybody's got one these days. Uh, speakers who refuse to speak at conferences without anti-harassment policies um, in, in this field, uh, me, for sure, uh, uh, Lee, uh, sorry, Alex Bailey, um, uh, let's see, I don't know any, oh, there's a whole bunch of people who signed uh, in the Python community who signed a pledge uh, on the webpage, let's get, let's get Louder, I think if you search for that, you'll find it. And they all agreed not to speak at a conference without an anti-harassment policy. And I encourage all of you to have the same rule. That's how we get there. Uh, yes, I, I personally have the rule that they have to either have an anti-harassment policy or if it's thrown by a corporation, a code of conduct uh, within the um, free software project that that company represents. So I, I, I happen to strongly agree with this. Okay. All right. So do you think the science mathematics interest gap for women begins so early, like in grade school? Uh, yes, it's very clear. The research shows that um, uh, young girls tend to, start to get put off by the negative messages that they're getting 
very early on, sometime, sometime in grade school usually is the case. Uh, each of us has a different story and path, but yes, it happens quite early. Uh, that's no reason not to keep doing work later on, but <laughs> go on. Um, for, for time management purposes, can somebody tell me um, the meaning of the time? Oh, it's 47. Okay, fantastic. We, we definitely have time for some more. When did you first become interested in computer science and why? What were some of the barriers or assistance you received in grade school, high school to allow you to pursue a career in computer science? In grade school and high school, were your interests in math and sciences? If not, what were your interests? <laughs> well, that's a, definitely a lot of points. Uh, so one of the things I realized as I became part of Linux Ships is just how lucky and how unusual uh, my experiences were. Uh, so my, I have a distinct memory of playing with punch cards in my mother's lab when I was two or three years old. Uh, so my mother was a computer programmer and we always had a computer in the house. Uh, I was also happened to be really good at mathematics and <laughs> I was socially isolated enough that nobody told me that I wasn't supposed to be good at mathematics. So uh, again, I just got really lucky. It was a combination of being, being good at things and being, escaping the messages. Uh, the interesting thing is that even though I grew up with a mother who was a computer programmer and having multiple computers in the house uh, from as young as I can remember, uh, that I actually didn't consider computer programming as a career until I was 17. Until then, I wanted to be a fiction writer because I enjoyed re reading science fiction. So clearly, I should write it as well, right? <laughs> uh, so what happened is I went to <laughs> DEF CON, the Conference Without an Anti-Harassment Policy, <laughs> uh, at uh, DEF CON 3 when I was 17. And I'm sorry to say, but um, my thought process went like this wow, these people have a lot of money and they wear black leather, and they're very cool. Uh, maybe I will consider being a computer programmer. And then it turned out I was really good at it, and I enjoyed it. So that's, that's how I ended up being that way. Uh, but it, uh, it really good, just goes to show like how many things I had to have stacked in my favor uh, before I went a different route from everyone else of my gender. All right, this question I'm going to put in, into to context that we actually integrate into our anti-harassment policy. What operating system you choose is not to be um, frowned upon here. All right, so this person is legitimately asking for your help. How do you li run Linux on your Mac, Apple, OS X? What distro? What Mac OS is it 10.10? Ah, so, uh, gosh, I think I'm running 10.9 still. Yep, um, whatever Mavericks is. I did not do Yosemite, I've heard many bad things. Uh, so I've done it a bunch of different ways. Um, the most convenient way is to run uh, one of the virtualization platforms. <sighs> Boy, I can't remember which one I used. I tried several, so. Um, the issue is uh, each, uh, as each new piece, new piece of Mac hardware comes out, it may take a while for the Linux drivers to become ready for it. Uh, and so sometimes doing the virtualization is the best way forward. Um, when I install it on bare metal, the last time I did that was um, using the Mint Linux distribution. Uh, that one worked pretty well. Uh, the thing that you're gonna have to do a lot of the times is um, booting off the installation uh, media is going to be really hard. So I often do this thing uh, where I use disk utility to create a new partition on the hard drive and I install the I copy the installation media onto that partition in the hard drive and then I uh, use uh, the open firmware console to boot from the partition in the hard drive. And there's a step in there involving um, uh, R REFI uh, before you can do that. So that's generally the general idea of the several hours of pain I go through to make this happen each time. All right, this next question is from somebody who went to high school with a student-led programming club and wants to know how to work to make them more inclusive and be an advocate for the voices who prefer to be quiet and, or on the sidelines. Uh, uh, so one of the ways you can help people have a chance to be heard 
uh, is to create um, create a, a standard and a culture and an expectation uh, that it's not whoever gets to interrupt the most or speaks the loudest, uh, but that there's someone whose job it is in order to give people a chance to speak, uh, and that everyone actually has this ability. But it's good to start out with des designating a person. If you look up the concept of gatekeeper. Um, this is someone who's paying attention to see who's getting a chance to speak and invites people, uh, interrupts people if they're speaking too much mm -hmm. and invites people to speak if they're being quiet. Uh, so this is theoretically what a teacher is supposed to do in the student life club. Uh, I would suggest starting out um, the first session of the year by introducing this concept uh, and then choosing a person for each meeting to be the official gatekeeper. And it's really important that everyone feels uh, like they have uh, the the ability to break in if the gatekeeper isn't doing their job and still uh, interrupt people and ask other people what to say. So. Uh, I think that we might have time for one more question. What is your opinion of Butterfess? <laughs> I thought I see you pronounce it correctly. Uh, yeah, um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very exciting file system technically. It's got a lot of hard work put into it. Um, if you look at Russell Coker's blog, on, uh, uh, he's in Australia, uh, ETBE is what he usually goes by as a username. Uh, he has a lot of detailed information about his experience installing and running uh, ButterFS in a production environment. Um, I think ButterFS needs more uh, investment from companies that use Linux. Uh, if they want Linux to keep being um, uh, the file system that is the most useful as a server. So. I really encourage, there's a few rough edges and corner cases um, where it could use some more work with um, debugging and testing and things like that. Uh, I think it's a great file system. I'm very excited. It represents a lot of hard work and um, just needs a little more investment from the companies that benefit the most from Linux. So, thanks. Well, thank you very much. schedule sheet and check in if you haven't already done so please check out the expo area and the 160 area I will probably be wondering all about if you need anything from me I'm Beth Lenagra the president of the Highland Express Corporation and I'm so excited that you're all here Woo!